I had a Ferrari, a sedan, a Stadies CLS, Cadillac Escalade, three jet skis, multi-million dollar house, absolutely everything. Local fame, tons of money, all the toys, a different girl every night, like seven girlfriends rotating, like a Monday girlfriend, a Tuesday girlfriend, all committed to me. I had to go through all of the hell of American relationships. The solution to the relationship problem being Southeast Asian women. Hey, what's up guys? King Epic here. So in this video, I've asked Tony Huge if he could go back in time, would he have started traveling to Asia sooner? Now, before we get to his answer, if you haven't seen the main video all about his perspective in regards to Thailand, Asia, Asian women, the link is in the description. Now, you might be wondering, what is this all about? You never made videos or collaborations with anyone else, so why with this Tony Huge guy? Now, I've addressed the reasons for this in the main video, so for the in-depth explanation, check that out. But to keep it short, in the US, Tony had it all. Money, looks, fame, women, basically things the critics claim you must be lacking if you go to Asia, Thailand, or if you associate with Asian women. And that's why I think Tony has a rather unique perspective on things. Six years ago, he decided to go on a mongering trip to Asia, not realizing it would change everything. If I could go back in time, would I go to Asia earlier? The answer is no. The reason why is I had to go through all of the hell of American relationships to understand and appreciate how magical my Asian relationships are right now. And I don't think if I would have experienced it much earlier, I would appreciate it. Now, it would have also uh, led for a much happier life if I didn't have to go through the hell of uh, uh, Western civilization relationships and if I would have just skipped all that and found this better type of relationship and these better, more free countries in the world. But see, I was in the American rat race. I was chasing the American dream and I did a really good job at it. I beat it. I beat the game. Uh, at the time that I went on my, my sex tour through Southeast Asia, because that's how I was first introduced to it. Uh, I was at the pinnacle, at the peak of my law career. I was a young, hot shot, superstar attorney with 30 employees working underneath me uh, in, a, in the fastest growing, in the largest bankruptcy law firm in Northern California. So I was making a lot of money, I had uh, a Ferrari, I had a, a sedan, a Mercedes CLS, I had a Cadillac Escalade, I had an X Star wakeboard boat, I had three jet skis, I had a multi million dollar house on the river, which in Sacramento, if you know, is, is probably the best place and most awesome house you could have. So I had absolutely everything local fame, tons of money, all the toys. And even then I had uh, what I thought mastered the American dream of relationships too. I didn't just have one girl that loved me. I had a different girl every night. I had like seven girlfriends rotating, like a Monday girlfriend, a Tuesday girlfriend, all committed to me. So I had everything a man in America could ever dream of. And I did that because I thought that you had to do all of that to find happiness. I thought that you had to do all of that and earn all these accolades to find respect from a woman. And then I go to Asia and these women that don't even know me, who have never even met me, who don't care how much money I have, don't care what kind of car I drive, don't care what my education is. They were physically attracted to me, ready to fall in love. And I'm the kind of guy that's romantic, wears my heart on my sleeve. I'm not, there's a bunch of different kinds of guys that go to Asia. There's guys that go on rampage that just want to sleep with as many girls as possible. And I have friends like that. There's guys that want to find love, like their one true love. And there's plenty of guys that do that successfully in Asia as well. And then there's me that's somewhere in between where I, I want to find a, a closed group of females to be my committed relationships. I want you know, between three to seven committed girls that I sleep with that are all committed to me that are long-term relationships, not uh, one night stands. I like to build the relationship and really get to know the person. And when I went to Asia, then I found that 
I could go down the street and I could meet a girl that was up for this type of relationship that was more loving to me than a girlfriend that I could have had in America for years. What I mean is in America to get through all the women's insecurities, to establish yourself as the dominant man in the relationship, to get the respect that, that we, that we crave as men that most of us never even experience in America, you know, that takes years of programming an American woman where these women in Southeast Asia were just ready for that type of relationship. They also, like me, wear their heart on their sleeve, they fall in love, they, they really do want to be with you forever, and, and it's kind of tricky because a lot of these girls are working girls, and so you, you, know, you can run into a lot of problems if you fall in love with them and they're not really in love with you, but the truth is it changes your perspective on love a lot, and you know, American, Americans may think that they have love because they get married and, and stuff, but uh, these Asians have love, whereas they open up their heart. They really care for you. They give you 100%. They don't hold back because they have some kind of psychological disorder or confusion about the male and female role in a relationship. So would I go back and go to Asia earlier? If I would have, I would have found that it would have been so easy to be satisfied with the relationship. I never would have beat the American rat race. That's a game and a chapter and a level of my life that I had to suffer through and beat the game in America and rise to the top like that. And my motivation was falsely based on the thought that that was going to give me the love and respect from women that I crave that I could have just gotten by visiting, by visiting Asia. And that would have shortcut the whole process and I think then I wouldn't have worked as hard for it. So for myself, it was probably better for my personal development to struggle through until age 30 until I found the solution to the relationship problem being Southeast Asian women. But for most men, I don't think they should suffer that much because they're gonna get locked down. See, I always knew that there must be something better. I was always trying to better my relationships and, and that's when I landed at age 30 before I first experienced Asia at having seven different girlfriends all committed to me and rotating between days of the week. And so I always thought, oh, it could get better and it could get better, keep working on it and, and chasing it. Uh, but a lot of men are gonna settle. A lot of men are gonna get married and be miserable the rest of their life under the control of a woman who doesn't respect them, who controls their money and who entraps them into a financial and emotional situation that pretty much destroys their life, which is what happens to most American men. So for them, I'd say, and especially any man who's considering getting married to an American women, woman, you should really get outside of America and see what it feels like to be treated and respected and embraced and loved as a man by a woman who loves being respected and loved as a woman. That polarity is very hard to find in America. In America, the roles between men and women are so meshed together, I, you know, I, I don't even know how the future of American sexuality is gonna work because Americans, men's testosterone levels are plummeting. American men are becoming more feminine than a lot of American women because of this confusion between the masculine and the feminine and, and this, uh, this attack on a man's masculinity and anything masculine in America. So for most men, you need to get out from under that because you don't realize how much it influences. You don't realize as a man in America how pussy whipped you've become in every way and in your perspective. And you need to get out for long enough to experience something different. And you need to do it as soon as possible before you get trapped financially or emotionally into a situation that you'll regret the rest of your life when you do find out later that there's alternative types of relationships that better suited your quality of life.